Yeah, good morning, guys. Mr. Good. Kane here. Good morning, Mrs. Gaswish. All right, so we're now on the second video of nomenclature. All right, this one gets a little tougher. It only gets tougher because you actually have to know the vocabulary, right? Yes. If you don't know what uh, phosphate ion looks like, then this is going to be hard. Right. And uh, basically, these are polyatomic ions. Phosphate is a polyatomic. It means that there's many atoms bonded together to form one charged entity. Correct. Right? And we've already started working on this. We've had a couple of days with our flashcards, right? Correct. Um, I mean, I recognize ammonium mm. and nitrate and sulfate. Sulfide. Right? And Hydroxide. sulfide. There's 11 of these that we should know. Right. There right. were 11 we put on index cards. Otherwise, this is on the back of the periodic table. Yes, but you still got to know how to use it. Because those, are, if you don't have those 11, you're going to do poorly on the quiz and the test this unit, right? Correct. Notice a lot of them have oxygen in them. They're also called oxyanions. Ooh, oxyanions. Oxyanions. Is that because they have oxygen in them and they're anions? Yep. And this one neither has oxygen nor is an anion, is, so it's yep. probably not an oxyanion. Nope, that's the only positively charged polyatomic on the list. So naming compounds that contain polyatomic ions. Most important, you need to know and recognize the polyatomic. Right. Yeah, that's We've already been working on that. Oh, and I just said that first morning. How about that? Uh, um, writing the formulas for the polyatomics is pretty easy. You treat the poly as a single entity, and you balance the charges just like the binary. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, so the total number of positives and the total number of negatives have to be equal to each other. Uh, put parentheses around a polyatomic ion when it's a formula, when there's more than one of it. So if I wanted, for example, more than one hydroxide, I would have to put a parenthesis around the hydroxide and say there were two of them. Right. Right. Like if, in magnesium hydroxide. Right. Like in magnesium hydroxide, because magnesium is positive two. Right. We need two of these negative ones. Right. If hydroxide I had wanted three of, like, like for aluminum hydroxide, I would want to write it like that. Correct. But if I was doing sodium hydroxide, where sodium is only a positive one, I only need one of those guys, so I don't need parentheses. Correct. You lose for more than one. I mean, the polys are really easy as long as you realize that that polyatomic anion is a single entity. Don't split it up into its O and its H. So I'm actually writing, if I'm showing my work on this, I'd show my one negative here. Yeah. And that means I've got a total of two negative charges. Correct. Right, and there's only one magnesium with a two positive charge, so that's a total of two positive. The method is the same as binaries. It's just that the polyatomic is a polyatomic anion or that one single cation in the case of ammonium. Right. Okay, so ammonium is a cation. So if we see ammonium somewhere, it's just going to go as the first thing because right. the cation always goes first. Yeah, and you're just naming them whatever the first guy is, it is, whatever the second guy is, it is. It's just that the polyatomics have a particular name. Right. You think I've made that in bold enough letters there, Mr. King? I think said it a lot too. You must recognize the names and charges of the polyatomics. So the 11. Yes. So for instance, hey, I see my old friend sulfate over there. <laughs> right? Right. Okay, so this is sodium first. NA is sodium. Sodium is not a transition metal, so I don't need Roman don't numerals. Need a Roman numeral. And then I just say that this is sulfate, right? Yes. This is sulfate. I recognize it as a sulfate this polyatomic is anion. Extremely easy. Yep. As long as you know the polyatomics. Potassium. Yeah. Phosphate. That seems way too easy. And again, no Roman numeral. It's not a tran multivalent cation. I see something I'm going to like here. Yep. I see a transition metal, a multivalent transition metal. All right. I know it's iron, but right. we know it needs a Roman numeral because we're getting familiar with these. Okay. So nitrate. One nitrate is a negative one, and there's three of them. Right. So that means I'm going to want a three positive charge for my total of iron. Right. Okay. So a Roman numeral three to indicate the charge of that iron. Right. It's got to have a three positive charge. And the name of that polyatomic anion is nitrate. Right. Okay, so not much harder. I've done this before. The only yeah. thing that's hard about it is the polyatomic. Right. Right. It's the same method. And so the fourth example we'll do here is this one, especially picked out because, holy shnikes, what's that in front? 
Well, and that's the only positively charged polyatomic. That's ammonium. Okay, so I'm going to write down A M M O N I U M because that's ammonium. All right. And then this other thing here. I don't think that was on our list of things to memorize. No, but it's on the back of the periodic table. You just flip the periodic table over. It's dichromate. It's dichromate. Yeah. I always remember it's dichromate because it has two chromiums. Right. Because right. right. chromate only has one. One, yeah. So a couple of examples going backwards. Sure. Okay, so sodium carbonate. Uh, nah, I don't want to do this one. I know it's sodium. Sodium is a one positive charge. So carbonate has a two negative charge. Sodium has a one positive charge. That means I'm going to want two, sodium. two sodiums. I only need one carbonate. So I'm going to write down Na2CO3 as my final answer. Well, notice, Mr. Kane, that the two subscript for sodium is from a charge, and the three after the oxygen is an atom. The carbonate polyatomic is made from technically four atoms, right? A carbon right. and three oxygens. Mm -hmm. That's the number of atoms of oxygen in carbonate. Right. Do not mistake that for from a charge. Right. Ooh, transition metal, a multivalent. Iron, three nitrate. So I'm going to write down iron with a three like that, because that's what the Roman numeral says, right? No. No? Oh, no. that's not what it says. That's right. It says that I have a three positive for iron charge. Yes. Okay. And nitrate, that's one that we've memorized. One nitrate minus. is a one minus. So we need, in order to make this work, we need three nitrate polyatomic anions. So I can just write a three right there. So it's going to be Fe NO3, three, just like that, right? 33 oxygens? Wow, oh, that's oh, a big oh. honker. Nope. Is, is that why we use the parentheses? That's why we use the parentheses. Okay, so I put a parenthesis in here to separate out the nitrate from the number of nitrates. Right, because it's an iron and a three nitrates. Okay, let me write that one more time up here so that it's nice and clear. That the three oh, that there are three for the nitrate is on the inside, and the three for how many nitrates is on the outside. Yeah. Okay. One minus is the identity of the nitrate polyatomic. Don't mess with it. Ooh, another one. Let's see. So that would be Cu2 plus. Sulfate is a polyatomic, SO4, with a charge of 2 minus. They're, those charges balance out. So oh, it's you a, got the easy yeah, one. Yeah, that's a one to one ratio. Yeah, I picked the easy one. Copper Done. sulfate. Yep. No parentheses required around the sulfate because there's just one of them. Okay.